This is the smallest FDM printer on the market. This is the Antina Tina 2 S. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, it is your resin, resin 3D printing guy with the F DM printer. Akuma Mods. Um, so, <laughs> Antina decided to send me one of their little tiny flagship printers. This is the Tina 2S. Now, there are three different versions of this. There is the Tina 2, the Tina 2S, and the Tina 2SE, I think it is. Um, so, the differences are some added features. The Tina 2 is just a standard 3D printer. You use an SD card, and that's pretty much it. You know, it's got a basic hot end, um, and I don't think it has a heated bed. The Tina 2S does have a heated bed. It has the ability to print from Wi-Fi, and it does have its own app print, uh, called Polo Print, which you can scan right here on the printer. Um, so it makes it a very unique printer. And then there is the higher end version, which is, like I said, I believe the Tina 2 SE. And that one does have essentially the same things as the Tina 2 S, but it has an upgraded hot end. So if you're looking for something maybe a little bit more robust, by all means, go ahead with that. But I will tell you that the middle version has been nothing but good news. So, with that being said, the Tina 2S is pretty much a very, very small 3D printer. Um, this is probably more geared towards kids. Now, I will tell you that the price range right now for these things range anywhere between $150 to $200, depending on which model you get. Uh, this one's more in the price range of about $180. Now, I know what you're saying. <gasps> That's so much money. You could get so much more for your money in terms of build volume. Absolutely, you can. 100%. You can always get better bang for your buck. But we're not talking about other printers. We're talking about this one specifically. It's catering to a very, very specific type of people. People that have kids, people that want to go and showcase 3D printing at trade shows. They don't want to lug around a giant printer and have it, you know, being worried about this or that. You basically can take this thing and set it up anywhere. And uh, it's just super compact. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Like, look at this. I can, I can pretty much have a full spool of, of filaments on here and it thwarts the entire printer almost like it's almost the size of the printer so that's how crazy it is and that's not even a full size spool that's that's kind of like cut down a little bit um now i will say that i am going to be working on a spool adapter to try and utilize a full size spool we'll see how well that goes uh but uh it, it's it's in its early stage i i just did some minor designing right now but uh, hopefully by the time I upload this video, I'll have it available and I will link it down below. Um, but yeah, this printer has been uh, pretty much nonstop printing. And one of the cool things about it, besides it having a heated uh, bed, a really nice hot end, it also has auto leveling. <laughs> what? What printer do you know that's in the 200 or sub $200 range that comes with auto leveling? Not like a crappy BL touch or a CR touch or anything like that that can break off. No, this has a proximity style sensor. So it's actually pretty accurate compared to that and it will never have to be replaced. You may need to adjust it every once in a while down the road, you know, maybe a couple years down the road, um, but that's really about it. It is a seriously robust printer and it, it's nothing to bark home about, you know? it's. It's got uh, an older version of Marlin on it, so nothing to really write home about for all you modifiers that are out there. If you guys want to throw on some custom firmware, have at it. I really don't know what type of board it's got in it, um, but I'm sure it's going to be very, very limited, the Marlin that you do put on there. 
Um, but it, I mean, it's just a great little printer. Um, I do suggest, you know, maybe upgrading the extruder when you uh, do get it because it does come with a plastic extruder or just wait until this one breaks. We all know that plastic extruders, just they just don't hold up, okay? Um, it's a common thing and it's just, it's always best to get an all metal extruder and really that's that's the best way to go about it um or you could just go ridiculous and get yourself a titan style extruder or a dual extruder whatever your choice is um that's about the only thing that i would see maybe needing some upgrade on this printer um maybe putting a ptfe tube for the uh for the spool because again when you uh try and put a full-size spool on here you're probably going to need something like that or you could just buy yourself 250 kilo uh, spools and run it through this thing till the cows come home. That would be absolutely perfect for this printer. 250 kilogram spools fit beautifully on this thing. Um, so if you're, again, looking to, to bring something to the trade show, this thing is absolutely it. Um, now, unfortunately, all of the prints that I pretty much printed on this, my daughter has subsequently stole, except for the last one that I did. Now, um, the downside that I have about this printer is it does use Cura. Um, I have tried setting up a profile on Orca, and I don't know if it's just me being rusty and not knowing how to code things correctly in slicers anymore. It's been a long time since I played with any Marlin firmware, any custom stuff on slicers. Um, so forgive me if I am super noobish on that. Um, but maybe somebody who's watching this video can help me uh, get a profile out there on Orca Slicer to maybe better tune this printer. Um, not saying it's bad or anything, but uh, you know, it could definitely use some uh, finer details because um, this one that I printed right now, um, that came off of the Polo Print uh, application, and this is just a Cali Dragon. And uh, the print is pretty nice, but you can definitely see some layer lines on it. Um, so I know I printed it in a fast setting. I didn't print it in a high quality setting. So maybe I'll try the high quality setting and see what major differences in it. Um, but I know we can definitely get some better quality out of these, uh, these prints that I've been doing on it. Um, the ones that I did on Cura seem to be pretty good in terms of like layer lines and stuff like that. Um, but uh, the other thing that I forgot to tell you about is, uh, yeah, this has got a flex plate on it. Now, unfortunately, because it's so small, it doesn't really flex all that well. Like that's about as much as the flexibility it's got, but it's enough to flex it off of there. And yeah, uh, one thing, again, I hate about the app is that um, it uses rafts consistently and I absolutely hate them. Um, but at least the uh, app is tuned in for rafts and it doesn't make the bottom look like absolute garbage uh, like most rafts do. So um, we've been pretty, uh, pretty good on that aspect. But there's at least one print that you guys can see off of the build plate and, uh, you know, judge on that, even though I know you guys can't see from that distance, but it's a pretty good print. And this is some very unique filament. It is a PLA X. Um, so this is an antimicrobial, um, antibacterial uh, filament that I've had for a while. I'll probably never use it for what its actual intended purposes are. So I decided, hey, let's make a completely antibacterial uh, Cali Dragon. Nobody's going to need it, but <laughs> here it is anyway. So that's the world of 3D printing. Uh, what are you going to need that for? I have no idea, but I'm going to make it. Welcome to 3D printing. Um, so yeah. Um, like I said, this is probably geared more for people who are going to use, utilize it for like showcasing how printers work at trade shows and whatnot. Um, you know, working with the kids on it. Like if you have a classroom, this is probably a great setup for it because you can easily teach the kids, Hey, this is a box area. You do not touch this area inside here. You just, as long as it's in that print area, do not touch it until it is completely done. So um, so I think this would be very good for specific case uses if you guys are looking into a specific style of printer. I think it, uh, it would be very useful for those type of situations. Whether or not you're gonna use it for that, hey, that's completely up to you. I know a handful of people that do have these printers and they use them as print farms. What? 
And the thing is, is you really can get away with this as a print farm because like I said, it is app controlled. So if you load it onto the app, you could essentially just send it off to a printer, send it off to a printer, send it off to that printer, send it off. And you could have thousands of these things, thousands of them. And they still wouldn't take up as much room as most of the printers do nowadays. Like my closest FDM printer, I think you could probably put two to four of these. And uh, that pretty much takes up one printer. So, now granted, your build volume is much, much less, but I mean, you have the ability to just print away and do whatever you want in small quantity. So if you're somebody who's doing miniatures, this might be a good, good setup for you for doing print farming. Who knows? You never know. I think that would be absolutely hysterical in the, the sea of what we all see on uh, print farms and what people utilize for print farms. And then you just see it cut to some other guy's print farm and you just see these tiny little printers and there's thousands wall to wall of these things. I think that would be absolutely hysterical. So, so yeah, um, uh, that's pretty much all I got to say about this printer. Um, it's like I said, it, it, it's been a fantastic printer. It's nothing really to write home about uh, in terms of like the quality and what it outputs, but it does print what you need it to. And uh, you know, if you're if you're printing for trade shows and things like that, just to show showcase people, if you're giving away free prints like that, that right there, like you buy you buy a print and you get a free print off of the printer, pff, man, that's a selling point right there. You pretty much just paid for that in one day. I guarantee it. So. Um, so I think, like I said, a very specific case use in these um, instances. So really you have to look at what you're needing and what you want. And again, I know all in the comments are going to be like, what for that price? I can buy this printer. I can buy that printer and it's much bigger and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But can you literally just put this in a backpack and go? Can your printer, can you put your back printer in a backpack and go? I don't think so. Nope, definitely not. Maybe, maybe some of them might, but the majority will not be able to just take it and go. See ya. Call it a day. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this printer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if, you, uh, if you aren't liking and following, please do so. I'd like to uh, make this kind of my full-time gig. I think that would be really, really awesome. And provide you guys maybe with some more intuitive videos and uh, maybe advance the channel a little bit more. Also, don't forget to uh, hit that notification bell because we do go live streaming every once in a while. We do do a lot of unboxing of these printers and uh, I think you guys would rather enjoy that and you know, discussing what printer is what and you know, whatever it may be that's on your mind um, as long as it's within 3D printing. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Till next time, happy printing.